Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 260 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast and huge news, big news, all right? A lot of people have been complaining that uh, Keelan's voice can be heard very faintly in the background of this podcast. Last few episodes, you know, Keelan used to have a microphone many episodes ago. That was given away to the Luke and Lewis show, a much more successful podcast. <laughs> now, a lot of people since then have been complaining that I talk to Keelan and then when he responds, it sounds like he's fucking three miles away, right? Now, I, ah, uh, fuck, the microphone came out. I'm not restarting it. What, what? To those people I say this, Great news, okay? Huge, great, big news. If, you, if in, in case you couldn't tell, that was Keelan laughing distantly in the background. <laughs> there he goes again, right? <laughs> it, it, great news. Thanks to your support on Patreon, right? Since we started the podcast up again and we did a few Patreon-only episodes, uh, Patreon's picked up and we spent that money on a new microphone, right? Now, that's really great because now... I have two microphones and you won't be able to hear Keelan at all because I'm just going to speak into both of the microphones so hopefully I'll be twice as loud and now Keelan won't be heard at all in the background. What do you think about that, man? Boo. What's that? Boo. Sorry, dude. Can't hear you over the sound of my two microphones. Um, uh, however, I will say this, right? Obviously, and we've talked about this on the show, we've, we've, we've mentioned the fact that Keelan does not get paid to do this anymore, <laughs> right? He was fired from this show and from everything to do with me, <laughs> and he knows why, right? Uh, he was fired, and, and uh, some may say that now he's doing a much better job at a much more successful show. <laughs> to those people, I would say, well, Luke and Lewis is only bigger because I don't do this show properly. <laughs> That's facts, right? Now, I'll say this. Keel and I agreed on, a, on an amount of money that he would like to be paid for this episode if the Patreon picks up. Now, Keel and I have an admission to, to make. This microphone costs way more than that. Oh, uh, how much is the microphone? I think it was like 150 bucks, right? <laughs> so that's, what's that? 50% more than what, what you, we agreed we would like to pay you per episode if the Patreon picked up, I think. No? We never didn't we say we'd do 100 bucks an episode? Oh, you didn't tell me that. Okay, well, maybe that's a conversation. Look, maybe this is an off-air discussion, all right? <laughs> 20 bucks, final offer, okay? I'm, now... I'm just doing it for the love of the show. He's doing it for the love of the show. All right, well, then don't worry about it. What I was leading towards <laughs> was maybe if the Patreon continues to grow, we'll make paying you a goal. Yeah, but you just said you do it for the love of it, so don't worry about it. I'll buy a third microphone for myself every month. How's that? How, okay, how about this? Until the Patreon picks up and we can afford to pay you here at Spearhead Sundays, hopefully never, <laughs> I will let you borrow this microphone, the second one, okay. and then the people can hear you. Yeah. But the minute I start paying you for the show, I'm taking it back. Deal? Yeah, deal. All right, great. Congratulations. Keelan finally has his own microphone. Uh, Woohoo. But that's on loan, and if you say anything unfunny, I'm confiscating it. <laughs> right. All right. Now, I'll be careful. Good. You better be careful. So, guys, uh, I've taken, as you can see, right, uh, I've got a brand new look, which I'm going to get into after I, I try and sell you some shit. Luke Lewis and Friends, it's happening in Melbourne again. We've got a great lineup. We've got Ruben Solo, Dan Rosario, and we've, and for the love of God, we're trying to find a girl act as well. We're trying. It's so fucking hard. They're all booked. The minute a, a woman is, like, funny in Melbourne, she's booked up to the ears. You tell one good one liner and you can fucking headline Madison Square Garden in this country. God damn. Oh, we're trying to get a female act on. We, we're trying our best. But there's but but what's great is for now, if you're really sexist, this is the event to attend, right? If you hate chicks, this is the one. There will be women in attendance uh, in the crowd and on stage. So you know what? If you hate chicks, don't come. Scratch that. <laughs> uh, Luke Lewis and Friends is on sale now. It's at uh, Fortress right in the middle of the city. It is this Tuesday. Tickets are on sale at lukeandlewis.shop. Uh, and last last time it sold out like real quick uh, and it was a fucking incredible night. So come down. It's our regular night of comedy that we run in Melbourne now. Uh, and also, if you can't make it to that show, come see me in Melbourne, straight out of Frankston. My brand new comedy show on sale now at Luce Beer dot com for those tickets uh it's uh yeah the the nights are actually filling up now fridays and saturdays they're filling up so get your tickets now uh and uh, i'll see you there 
Right. Now, here's the thing that I wanted to talk about, right? Uh, obviously, the team here at Spears Industries is growing. What's going on? I just heard like a sound. Uh, don't worry about it, man. It's all good. What'd you hear? It, I thought, you know, the sound of fire crackling? Yeah. That's what I thought I heard. What What was it actually? I'm not sure. Did you Did you sit on like a packet of corn chips that was in your bag or something? <laughs> Give me that microphone now. You've blown it. Uh, the, give it back. Uh, the, fir the first thing, I give you a microphone and you're like, hey, everyone, stop recording. It's time to find out about what I thought happened but didn't actually happen, all right? Can I earn it back? You get it back in a minute, right? At six minutes and 45 seconds, you get the microphone back. But the next time you say something unfunny, the band goes for two minutes, all right? Now, what was I saying before I was so rudely interrupted and, and then so rudely responded to that interruption? <laughs> Right. Uh, the team here at Spears Industries is growing, right? And we're, we're overhauling the Patreon Discord because I'm going to be honest, uh, the, the, the Patreon Discord is kind of like when, when a guy sets up a utopia, a perfect land, and then, and then he just abandons it and, and lets the people, you know, up, off to their own devices and it turns into like, uh, what's that movie, Mad Max, but instead of everyone running around killing each other, they're just posting images of fucking hentai and gifs and shit like that. That's done. That's all out. We've got the, the sheriff's back in town. All right? We've got my, what are you doing? Are you dropping shit? Yeah. All right, you don't get it back till 7 minutes 45. You had five seconds left on the fucking time and you blew it. Oh, right? Sorry. Well, don't be sorry. Be better. <laughs> Uh, anyway, right? So, uh, we brought in new team member Zach, who's helping run the Discord and do a bunch of other stuff behind the scenes here. And uh, we made a big deal. All right, well, let's run this shit properly. Let's introduce the team, right? So, we, we, we set up Rosie with the Discord. She says hello. Everyone says hi, right? It's flawless, seamless. That's all you got to do, right? Uh, we, we set up uh, a little uh, image of me. I post in the Discord. I say hi. Everyone's like, hey, welcome back, Lewis. Went seamless. Went great. Oh, Zach, right? His first impression in the Discord. He goes, hi, I'm Zach. I'm a graphic designer. I do a bunch of other things for Lewis. And then he posts his, his desk. And on his desk is a fucking Confederate flag. <laughs> what? On his, and immediately everyone's like, hey, man, is there a Confederate flag on your fucking desk? And I was like, whoa, who the fuck have I hired? This was his first week at Spears Industries. I hired a fucking, uh, what are they called? What's their fucking army? A confederate. Wait, a confederate. Is that what it is? Because it's a confederate flag. What? I, man, I fumbled that shit. I don't know. Anyway, the point is they love slaves, right? Which, I, which personally I'm against. But, but, but saying that, you know, I, I do have a guy here working for free. So, you know, we're not all perfect. All right? Anyway, your two minutes is up. You can have your microphone back. <laughs> all right, but I'm still not paying you. <laughs> Thank um, you. What? Why was there a Confederate flag? Well, he, he, this is this is what happened. So he posted and immediately, straight away, his everyone's first impression is like, oh, is that a fucking Confederate flag on his desk? That's a little bit strange. You know, what business am I supporting? And I'm going, what, what fucking guy have I hired? Apparently, Zach, right, and I, and I hope to God this is true, he, he visited a fucking museum that had a bunch of flags and he bought a bunch of flags and he just rotates them. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> right. Now, that flag is now out of rotation, right? But what was really good is that uh, that image gets posted and, and then everyone starts calling it out and he goes, oh, fuck, and then he deletes the image, but, of course, it's my Discord. Someone immediately screenshot it and posted it again. So that's, you know, a little bit of a, you know, come join the Patreon Discord if you want to yeah. see me, my own employees get fucking cancelled. <laughs> For fuck's sake. But it's all good, guys. He's not a confederate. He just enjoys a bit of history. Speaking of, I would like to unveil my brand new swastika behind this. Uh, no, I don't have one. I just have a haircut that makes me look like I would have one. Um, speaking of, I'm back to the classic, all right? I've got, uh, I've, I've, I've gone back. I tried a new hairstyle, right? I tried doing the Beatles. It looked good for about three days, and then, uh, and then it just made my forehead itchy, and I uh, couldn't be bothered styling it. So uh, then I tried doing a bit of a looser style, and that just made me look like I didn't shower. So now we're back to the classic, the, the uh, you know, like the... Nazi officer, first sergeant haircut. That's what I'm at. It's, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. That's what looks good on me. I know. I look like I'm about to, you know, just fucking start saluting at an alt-right rally. 
or walk into a gun with a walk into a school with a gun. Okay, but that's you know you know sometimes you, you can't control how you look. Some people some people are born with genetic de- genetic defects. Some people are born looking like they just came out of a rally, and that's me. So uh, you know, back to the classic. And you know, if 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 it if it uh, ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm back to it. Okay. Now, uh, speaking of uh, of dictators and wars, Ukraine's happening now. Uh, what did I say in the last episode? I think we recorded the last episode right when it was kicking off, like literally the day they invaded. So we didn't know much. Now heaps more has happened, dude. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out there. I might sound crazy for this, but I reckon Ukraine has this in the bag. I reckon you. I think that Russia leaves. I think Russia gives up. I don't think it's gonna happen soon. In fact, I think that maybe even Russia will take a lot of Ukraine, but I just, I didn't realize like, uh, like how big Ukraine is. It's 44 million people. I don't think you can do a hostile takeover of a country that large. It's also fucking large. It's not like England where there's shitloads of people, but it's very small. It's like really massive and spread out. I don't think Russia takes it. It seems like... There's a bunch of people that don't really want to be there and don't really know why they're fighting versus people like defending the homes they live in and the lives they lead, you know? I think that, uh, I think it's like uh, fucking, all jokes aside, fucking incredible seeing the Ukrainian people like rise to the challenge and like band together and, uh, and yeah, like stand against what's happening to their country. I think it's fucking it's terrible, but it's also like amazing and incredible and inspiring. Uh, and and another interesting like little thing that's come from this that I never really expected is that I know exactly how to make a Molotov cocktail now. You know, like the instructions are just out there on the internet. It's just been posted everywhere. I didn't know you needed styrofoam. I thought I thought from my video game knowledge you needed like glass bottle, gasoline, and cloth, but what you also really want to add in is a little bit of polystyrene so that when you throw it onto a human, uh, instead of just going out when you pat it out, it melts their fucking eyes and sticks to their skin and they, and they die a horrible death. So that you learn something new every day. You know, I didn't know that. Now I do. I'm not going to use that knowledge, I hope. Right? We'll see what China does. Right? But now I know. Fuck, that'd be one of those things where you, where you, where you make it and you build it, and you feel real sick, and then you throw it, and then, and then you never forget that moment for the rest of your fucking life. But that's war, I guess. That's horrible. Uh, and I guess that's what you have to resort to when a superpower invades your country. Although, is it a superpower if, you're, if your fucking dollar is worth less than a Robux? <laughs> you know, the ruble is worth less than a Robux. Fucking Ro- Roblox money is worth more than a ruble. Um... <laughs> Dude, what's really interesting is all of these sanctions are coming. This is why I think that Ukraine takes it in the long run, maybe, because it seems like while Russia might be able to, like, you know, overwhelmingly force their way into controlling the city, then what? They own a country that doesn't want them there and doesn't want to be under their rule while being under, like, heavy, heavy sanctions from the rest of the world. Like I don't, I don't see how Russia wins this. Like I don't get what their goal is. I understand. I watched a really interesting um, little mini doc that this guy did about like Russia's perspective on this whole thing, and it, the video used to be called "Why Russia Might Invade Ukraine," and then it was released like a year ago, and then he just changed the title to "Why Russia Is Invading Ukraine," and so like he pretty much just called it, and it was really interesting looking at it from from Putin's perspective, because it's not even really right. Like Russians don't seem to want this, but it, but it almost makes sense in Putin's brain. If you step into his mind from his point of view, which is a fucked point of view. So Russia and Ukraine and all these, all these other Eastern European like countries used to be like one giant block called U- the, the USSR, the Soviet union. And it used to be as big as Russia is. It used to be like almost twice the size that it is. So Ukraine and Russia were like the same country and Russia, as we know it today, actually started in Ukraine, like before Russia and Ukraine, there was this place called like Urus or, or some weird name, like Russia, its roots 
are in Ukraine. So in Putin's mind, there's no difference between Ukraine and Russia and the West has influenced Ukraine to like join them and corrupted his people and changed their culture on purpose. And I bet there is an element of truth to that. Like there is, you know, the Cold War happened and the West definitely fucks with, uh, you know, communist countries to become more capitalistic and, and more and promote democracy so that basically they can make more money and trade better and have stronger military alliances. Like that is true. Russia's doing that to us as well, but we're doing that to them. I think that Russia's in the wrong here, but from their point of view, that makes sense, right? But uh, what's really interesting is the, the Putin was like part of the USSR. And what I'm doing here now is is I watched a 10 minute video, believed all of it, and now I'm going to tell you like it's the truth, and now you're going to tell your friends, and this is how misinformation starts. Okay, <laughs> so welcome to my fucking history le- lesson on on uh, why Putin's invading Ukraine and why, from his point of view, it makes perfect sense, even though it's insane and evil, right? But it's really interesting. So he was like a like a like an officer for the Soviet Union or or a KGB agent, and. Uh, I didn't know this. How old do you think Putin is? 50. Yeah, that's what I thought, right? I was like older. You look at him and he looks 50, right? Yeah. I thought Putin was 50. Zach, how old do you think Putin is? I thought he was like early 60s. Early 60s. Yeah. The guy's almost 70. I, I, didn't, I didn't know this. The guy's almost fucking 70 years old. I thought he was like 50-something. Whatever they're feeding him, I want some. He looks good. He's probably eating uh, everything that his, his people can't, you know? <laughs> but that's why Russia's so fucked. He's eating everything good, right? So anyway, so that's, he's so old that he was like a really prominent KGB agent during the Soviet Union days. So from his perspective... He's just trying to bring back the USSR and uh, reform what the West destroyed. That's basically how he's thinking. And he's thinking, oh, our amazing empire was fucking destroyed. I'm going to rebuild it. Problem with that is because he's so old. And you see this a lot of the time with, with really old politicians. What they want is not what most people want, purely because most people around their age are either dead or dying or they've moved on or they were children when this shit was happening so they don't really understand or know what they're missing out on that these old people want to bring back they don't they don't miss it because they never really experienced it because they were children so they just you know in their own little bubble their family bubble so that's like from my understanding, from like a, a few things that I read and a speech that he made and a few videos I watched, where he's coming from, which in his crazy head, I guess, makes sense. He's not invading Ukraine. He's reforming Russia and the USSR, basically. And they were always one people. But the problem is, you know, the Ukrainian people do not think that. So it's like Putin's going to come in and take over Ukraine and go, all right, guys, we did it. You're welcome. You're, we're back. We're now one people. And everyone in Ukraine is going to go, hey, you're fucking crazy. We don't want to live under your rule. Uh, we don't like this. You're a dictator. Get the fuck out of our country. And I feel like even if they take over Ukraine, which it doesn't look like they're having too much success with, uh, it seems like even if they were to like win on paper, they'd be dealing with like guerrilla fighters, fucking forever which is exact you know that's what happened in afghanistan like we won right we took over but we never the people never stopped fighting like they never gave up they were like we don't want you guys here get the fuck out some people did a lot of people didn't and eventually we just had to go well we can't convince everyone without fucking turning the place to glass so we're out uh and i feel like that's like what's gonna happen in ukraine but i'm so on ukraine's side and a lot of people are thinking what can we do to help ukraine what can we do to fight russia and i'm going to tell you what you can do as an average person because it can feel really hard you know like what what are we supposed to do we supposed to send the money is the money even going to get there like how's the money going to be spent like uh what what do i actually do as a person who doesn't live in ukraine or russia how can i stop this from happening and i've decided that the best way to help ukraine is to just believe 
Every single story that comes out of Ukraine that shows them in a good light, no matter how obscenely and obviously false that it is. <laughs> For example, I heard yesterday the ghost of Kiev killed 350 Russian fighter jets while blindfolded. That's true. I'm choosing to believe that's true. Has, has anyone verified if the ghost of Kiev was ever real? That guy's not, like, that's not a real story. And I feel like that's quite obvious. Because first it started off as like, oh... Ukrainian pilot downs two Russian jets. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Good on him. And then it was like, now he's now he's taken down six. I'm like, oh, that's that's amazing. Then it turned into, oh, they shot down the ghost of Kiev. And I'm like, oh, no, they got him. And then it turned into, oh, he survived and he's back in the air. He was never real. Surely he was never fucking real. A guy, a guy like down six jets, got shot down. They put him back in the air and he downed six more. That's what I've seen on Twitter from like Ukrainian news sources. That's not, that shit's not true. Is it? I heard another thing, but I'm choosing to believe that it is true to piss off Russia. That is true. I guarantee it. Can you Google that? Is the ghost of Kiev even fucking real? I bet he's not because I'm seeing it on Twitter a lot. And I'm seeing all of these like TikToks that are going crazy viral of like war footage of Ukrainians like destroying tanks and stuff. And then I see it on Twitter getting debunked like like two hours later that it was like from some other war that happened in between two separate countries. But I'm choosing to believe that it's true. And every time you see Ukraine dunking on Russia, regardless of how true that is, you believe it, you share it, you put it out there. This is how we win this war with positive misinformation. Uh, the videos they're uploading of him are from a video game and the photos <laughs> they're posting of him are from three years ago. Posted by the defense ministry. Wow. So and the, the pilot in the photos is just doing a test flight. <laughs> yeah, see, it's not it's not real. But you know what? It is real. I'm choosing to believe that it's real. Watch out for the ghost of Kiev. And then there was like some other guy that had a really scary name that was supposedly killing a bunch of Russians on the ground uh, that I'm also choosing to believe is true. Um yeah, I, I read some other story about something like uh, the the Air Force claimed to take out like three hundred Russian vehicles, and everyone was like, "Oh, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know about three hundred Russian vehicles. This seems like a lot of vehicles to take out in one go. That's a lot." But you know what? As a proud member of democracy and the West, I, you know what? Ukraine did it, and I bet it was all the ghost of Kiev, and he did it while he was blindfolded uh, on foot after he was shot down for a third time and still survived. The man's invincible. Let's go. Ghost of Kiev. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's crazy. Another thing that's... This is why I don't, I don't think that Russia can last if the sanctions last, because that's the thing. This is like such a big game of all of these nations have put these crazy sanctions on Russia, but sanctions do, it's like a double-edged sword because it's like, oh, we're not going to buy this from you, but we need that. You know, there's a lot of things that we're just deciding not to buy that we do need, hoping that we can starve Russia. But if Putin's like, I reckon I can hold out longer than you guys can. I think that his plan is basically like, I can not sell this to you for longer than you can not buy it from me. I think is the plan. And that's all, that's going to be the gamble. And you know who pays the price? Everyday Russian civilians, right? And I think that's, uh, I don't know. I've seen a lot of people going, oh, sanctions only hurt the everyday people. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, isn't the only other alternative like war? We can't have war. But the one sanction no one's doing is is deciding not to buy oil, which is apparently the only sanction that might actually make uh, Putin and other oligarchs go, all right, maybe we should stop this is if we stop buying oil. But then the whole world stops. It is so weird like seeing the world decide how they're going to punish like uh, a really bad thing without war because war in today's times are j is just too fucking crazy. Um, so I don't know. But what's it, what is very interesting, right? My favorite thing is seeing how the average person and how private businesses are responding to this, right? I, I'm seeing bottlers everywhere refusing to sell Russian vodka. Got him. Owned. Take that, Russia. That'll hurt, you know, 10 distilleries that are probably owned by the same guy in Russia. I mean, do you really think that that the number one customer of, of Russian vodka is not Russians? I don't think that hurts them too much, right? But then there's another one, right? Here's one that definitely will hurt them. Apple Pay, no longer working. 
That's annoying. I got to use cash. I got to use the my actual fucking rubles. That's annoying, right? That's a good uh, that's a good private little sanction. But here's the one that's going to hurt the most. All right. Now this is one. This is why I'm saying that Ukraine comes out on top and Russia retreats because you get like private businesses making decisions like this. The sequel to the Sonic film is not being released in Russia. And I don't see how Russia can continue this war if their people can't see the sequel to Sonic. Right? Now, I don't think that anyone there saw the first film, but I know they all wanted to see the second film. And I know that we're not going to see riots in Russia because they're all of a sudden bread costs a million dollars. No, we're going to see riots in Russia because they want to see the second Sonic film where, where Jim Carrey goes bald and wears a funny mustache and dresses up as Dr. Eggman. That's what freedom's all about. Idris Elba's in this one. Idris Elba's in this one, right? How, how can you miss out on that? Do you hear that? That's the sound of Russians protesting and getting arrested and filling up all of their prisons because they want to watch the second Sonic film. (laughs) That's what's really going to end this war is brave companies. Like who the fuck made that? Paramount. Paramount. Probably Probably some one guy working alone in his bedroom, right? Getting paid by the hour to make that fucking film. They're not releasing it. And God bless Paramount Films, right? Makers of, of some of the greatest moments in film, like the first Sonic f- <laughs> movie. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what's, what happens here. What? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just laughing at that. No, well, that's good. You can keep, you can keep your mic there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm. I'm. He's on. He's on thin ice. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. What What do you think happens with Ukraine? Me? Yeah. Uh, I think I was thinking about what I said to you earlier is that say, similar to what you're saying is that they might win because of just the manpower they have, but Russia also haven't sent in their like proper troops. They're just sending in like their trainees and their young guys at the moment. And they're yeah. not even using like half of their firepower. Which yeah. I think, I think is they, the they, scariest part. like, uh, they, they can like, I think they definitely wanted to win this faster. They, they underestimated Ukraine, but it, yeah, it definitely seems like like on like they can take all of the cities, but like it's not just you got to hold them too, mm. and you got to that's like how much fucking resources and time and manpower and violence do you need to use to keep a country that big and that like opposed to your rule under wraps? I don't think it's possible, especially not if everyone else keeps up their sanctions. But I guess what could happen is they'll take. You know, maybe they take Ukraine and the rest of the world goes, oh, well, don't do it again. We're going to end the sanctions because it hurts us as well, but Mm. don't do it again. And then, you know, I don't know. My favorite part is actually hearing the stories of like the 18-year-old Russian prisoner of wars. Yes. Yeah, prisoners of war. Yeah. Getting caught and being like, I don't even know why I'm here. I didn't even know there was a war. (laughs) Yeah, that's like, uh, that that reminds me of when I like worked at a call center. (laughs) You know, I don't want to be here. Like I, I I don't know I they told they told me to do this and and I'm doing a you know I'm doing a half ass job yeah you yeah. know <laughs> like it seems like they like not like all of or every single Russian soldier is just me when I worked a regular job like I'll go but I'm not gonna do a good job Have you, you seen that video where they're broken down on the side of the road and yeah the Ukrainian guys just like what's happening do you need help <laughs> that's so weird seeing like that's that's how fucking weird war is is that it's not like it's not like what you see in the movies where it's like oh there's the enemy get him it's it's a lot it seems to be like way more nuanced than that where like yeah like ukrainians can walk up to russian soldiers who are invading their country and go hey dude what's going on do you need a cigarette (laughs) what are you guys doing here because yeah i don't know i don't know what the fuck i would do if all of a sudden like chinese soldiers just rocked up and they like they like weren't shooting everyone they were just hanging around yeah i might go up for a chat yeah what's up boys what are you doing can you guys can you guys go away? Yeah, yeah. Please? Like, I would try that. Hey, can you guys go away, please? No? All right. Sweet. I'll be back in five minutes. And then I would go to, like, my storage and i get the polystyrene. <laughs> i go, well, this is going to scar us both. <laughs> yeah, it's so fucked, man. It's, 
It's crazy, but I guess I don't know. It's 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 mental seeing war unfold in real time on social media. Like we have we got a in in the Patreon Discord, there's a guy from Ukraine like fucking fleeing the war, like trying to get as as west as he can or as east, whatever's furthest away from it. And it's like you know, you see, you see, like uh, World War Two and and even, and Afghanistan and stuff like that, and and it and you know because they speak, because they're from like such different cultures and lands, it's easy to like kind of forget or or not not hear everyone's side. But then with this, it's like, uh, yeah, it's nuts. Although I suppose like that's just probably like propaganda that we're seeing. That's another thing that 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 has is so obvious is like how much propaganda we're seeing every day. Uh, and how both sides are trying to twist the truth. Like, I would imagine big reason why no one sees, like, uh, the negatives of, you know, the Afghanistan war on the news or any any conflict in the Middle East, basically. You don't see much of, like, the local populace's point of view is because it probably makes us look like terrible people and it doesn't suit the agenda of the people that are in there, which is us. You know, so guys, you know what, man? After a lot of discussion, I've decided that war is not good, man. And maybe we should all just like embrace peace and love, dude. And we should all put down our guns and just hug and kiss, man. And that's what I would like to put out into the world. And I think that's a that's a perspective that you haven't heard before is, dude, man, maybe we should like not do that. And then things will be chill and cool. Right. You hear that? It's the sound of Russian soldiers leaving. I just solved the crisis. Hey, guys, don't stop it. That's mean. Fixed it. God, I'm a genius. Um, anyway, I have... Uh, <laughs> speaking of invasions, I have uh, an update about Tasmania, right? Oh, fuck yeah. We, 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 we invaded Tasmania a while ago. We escaped uh, COVID. We went to Tasmania. I leased a house, Right. Now, that lease uh, ended uh, at the start of March. It is now March 3rd. I have not moved my stuff out. All right? Now, here's what happens when you say you're going to move out on a certain date. Oh, oh no. <laughs> what they do oh, no. <laughs> is they, they send you a, 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 an intention to, to leave, and I did not sign that, and I ignored them. Yeah. Why? Because couldn't be bothered. I was like, yeah, I'll do it at some point, and then I didn't, right? Mm. Some, you know, bit like this podcast, Spearhead Sundays, which comes out usually every Sunday. Actually, not even usually, 50% of the time. I counted up the amount of Sundays that should have been here since the start of the, the show, and I'm, I'm, I'm hitting like just over 50%. Now, that is because it was a big gap where I didn't do any episodes for months because I was sad, but still, it really <laughs> fucks up the ratio. Things are better now, though. I promise that I'll probably, I might, look... Guys, find out. Every Sunday, it's a roll of the dice. So they send me a thing. I ignore it. And then we call them and we go, well, we should maybe sort this out. And apparently they've, they sent an eviction notice uh, by mail to the property. Now, obviously, I'm not there. I didn't see it, right? So uh, ended up going, no, 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 all good. We'll just do this and then we'll get out on this new date, right, which is in like two weeks, I think. We're going to go down. We're going to get our stuff and it's, that's all good. Right now, Keelan, you were the last person to see the state of that fucking house. Oh no! Right. So, what's it look like on the inside? Is it, it's disgusting, right? Yeah, pretty gross. Especially, <laughs> especially the kitchen and upstairs. Especially the kitchen and the bathroom. Yeah, and the bathroom. Yeah, right. Rosie's, so we, Rosie's, we kid, Rosie's uh, outhouse thing. Outhouse. Yep. What? What? She bungalow. had a whole. She had, uh, as usual, just the best. Bungalow, the best room. Whole bungalow, clean, ensuite, everything. Vacuumed. Yeah, yeah, looks beautiful. Yeah, no, good that's on the her. Cleanest part of the house for sure. Now, why the fuck didn't she clean our rooms? That's what I would like to ask. <laughs> yeah, I know that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's very suspicious, and I will be having a word to her <laughs> after this. Right now, the rest of the house is a sty. Oh no! Uh, to the point where uh, Uncle Whitey, right, a uh, friend of the show, he came. He he lives in Tassie, and he just showed up. <laughs> Because uh, he has some spare keys, we gave it to him just in case anything went wrong. So he showed up to check out the place and FaceTime me, and he said, "Man, it smells horrible in here. <laughs> it smells absolutely fucking awful." And I said, "Check the fridge. I'm pretty sure I left some steak in there." Opens the fridge, still in there. 
Now, I'm like, you need to put that in the bin. But then he says, I can't put that in the bin because it's not bin night. So if I put it in the bin, it's just going to be rotting in the bin for months. And I was like, okay, cool. Leave it in the fridge then, I guess. Oh, no. The lesser of two evils. So that meat that had been there. Hang on. That, so when we were leaving, Rosie and I were doing like the final just tidy up. Now, that's one thing that I will say fuck you both for is leaving the steak in the fucking fridge. And, <laughs> and she went to clean it and I told her, I said, stop. He he deserves this. No way. <laughs> what do you mean? You're sabotaging me. <laughs> I'm going to lose my deposit, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you really? Well, we'll see. Oh, okay. This is what I'm leading up to. Okay. This yeah. is the exciting part in my life, right? So so that's that's the state of it. And then upstairs is my room and there's like there's like dirty bowls and shit everywhere and my clothes are everywhere. Oh, it's it's fucked. There's human feces smeared on the walls. <laughs> Me and Keelan had a crazy night. And also the place has a rat infestation, <laughs> which I forgot to mention. That part wasn't our fault, but certainly it's worse now. It's got to be due to the smell, right? Yeah. So that's all happening at that. But I'm still like, well, it doesn't matter because I'm going to go there. We've booked a whole weekend there. We're going to clean it up. We're going to move all of our stuff. We're going to deep clean it and then we'll get out. And, and then they won't even notice and it'll be fine. Now, I probably shouldn't be saying this on record, but I think it's really funny to report on these things as they happen. <laughs> uh, I get an email from the real estate agent going, because I've, I've said we're going to be out on this date. So they've gone, hey, we've organized inspections. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. They go, we've organized inspections these days. And it's like five in a row, five days. I'm like, fuck, how do I cancel all of these inspections. By the way, they know that I, I'm not there. I just spoke to them a few days ago and I said, oh, no one's there. No one lives there. I'm back in Melbourne now, so it's just a house. And and they were like, oh, is it clean? And I went, yes. Because <laughs> I didn't want them to know that we just left steak and rats and bowls festering for months in the house. So I'm like, no one's there and it's clean. Thinking that I would... Because I didn't think they do I'd, – I'd only rented one place. I didn't know they did inspections while you still live there. I didn't know you, they did that. That's pretty unusual. Yeah, that's weird, right? But they they organized it. They're supposed to pay you if they do that. Are they? Yeah, I got oh, – not, not funny, but I got, a no, I got an email the other day saying they're going to do inspections at our place and we get paid $50 per inspection. The, where's my fucking money? Right, anyway, okay, so – I'm like, well, there's five in a row. It's 250 bucks. Maybe I should let him do it. <laughs> 250 bucks and a funny story. Wait, but then I'll lose my deposit. Oh, Never man. mind. That's, that's no deal, right? So <laughs> I, I go, all right, how do I cancel five in a row? And I just email back and I go, please do not do any inspections. I have COVID. <laughs> <laughs> and I just told him I've got COVID. And so they've cancelled it. And you know what's going to happen is COVID goes for seven days now and then you can do whatever you want. Oh, you're an idiot. No, because you know what's going to happen next week? You're going to get COVID. <laughs> <laughs> when are you going? Uh, in two weeks. <laughs> Just after you recover from COVID. Wait, are you going like next Saturday? I think next, next weekend, yeah, I'm going. That's yeah. the, the night of the Wiggles. Uh, look, it's in my calendar. I don't know. I don't think I'm going on the Wiggles. Or maybe I am. Maybe you have to replace me. Look, the point is, <laughs> you can't go to the Wiggles because you've got COVID anyway. Oh, no. Yeah, what a bummer. <laughs> I've got COVID. So so that's really great. And that's, I feel like a little stroke of genius from me is, uh, you know, sometimes lies get you places. Or, you know, they get you in trouble. We'll see what happens after I release this episode publicly. Hilarious. Really, really good stuff there. I'm, man, if there's, you know, say what you like about me. I can think of my feet. And I'm a disrespectful, uh, well, you know, I'll never rent again because, because you know, they'll probably give me a bad review. And I'm a homeowner now. Um, right. What else do I want to talk about here? I guess, look, maybe it's time for miscellaneous to be the end. We're going to have to, we, there was so much stuff on here that we didn't do. 
We'll do that on the Patreon podcast. Um, right. So miscellaneous bit of the end. Oh, this episode's sponsored by Manscaped. Guys, manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The Lawnmower 4.0, the best ball bag trimmer in the game. And they have a bunch of uh, personal grooming products at the moment. Look at all this stuff they've shipped me. We've got body wash. Love that. Love to wash my body. We've got deodorant. Body spray. Hydrating body spray. Spray it on your body. Feel very hydrated. Don't drink it. Um, wait, what else do we have? We have roll-on deodorant. That's great. And we also have uh, Keelan's favorite. Two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> What's funny about that? Nothing. There's nothing funny about two-in-one conditioner. Nothing at all. There's nothing funny about a bloke getting in the shower <laughs> and going, I don't have time for two products. <laughs> hey, what's funny? What are you laughing about? I'm just laughing to have a good time. Yeah, <laughs> well, and we love having a good time here. Yeah. And you know who else has a good time? Every bloke, when they use Manscaped... <laughs> to- <laughs> hey, stop laughing. We're having a good time, guys. We're watching a video on the other computer. <laughs> and it's very funny. Guys, manscaped.com, use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Use the the lawnmower 4.0. That trimmer thing, really, really great. I use it. uh, My girl uses it, and it's great, all right? Men, women, it's a great gift for your boyfriend, better gift for yourself, all right? Shave those balls. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. What a bar, Jane. Um, Now we can get into miscellaneous bit of the end. If you want to send me an email... Send it through to podcast at loosebeers.com. That's podcast at loosebeers.com. All right, and we're back. Hacked into my own emails. Okay, we have this. I usually do like two emails, but uh, just by reading the subject line and seeing the length of this one, uh, I think we're just going to be covering this one today. So the subject line is, uh, are you ready for this, Keelan? Yes. Uh, leaving my boyfriend for a heroin dealer about to go to prison. Oh. So... This young lady's about to make a great choice, just from the subject line. Uh, hey, Lewis, I guess maybe you'd be interested in... Why do people tell me this shit? <laughs> I, you know what? Uh, don't not tell me, but also I, I'm, it's very interesting that you do. And continue to tell me because it makes for great content. I'm going to change everyone's names for, her, for everyone's safety, including mine. Um, hey, Lewis, <laughs> I guess maybe you'd be interested in this, but to put it in the simplest terms, I'm seriously considering leaving my boyfriend of six years for a man who's about to go to prison for smuggling one kilogram of heroin and two guns into Queensland. Damn. Wow. I've attached the police release of his arrest. Let's have a look at this. Uh, oh, this is fucking crazy. Man. All right, that's real. Wild. Okay. I met him through my boyfriend around five years ago when he was our drug dealer and his co- and his co-worker at one of the ma- mo- major supermarkets. I dealt with him uh, the I dealt with him the most because my boyfriend hated going out and doing drug dealers deals. I was always super attracted to him, but I left him alone because he was just our dealer, not even our friend. My boyfriend and I separated for about five months at one stage three years ago and I found the dealer on Tinder. Swipe right, he swiped right and less than a month after my boyfriend and I broke up, I was with him, staying in his apartment, doing all the drugs I wanted, skipping my TAFE classes to help him pack caps. It was a fever dream of sex and drug-induced passion and the sad part is that I truly love him more than anyone in the world to this day. (laughs) Wow, okay. I have major mental health issues. Really? (laughs) That's fucking surprising. Uh, that had progressed into substance abuse before I even connected with him. So I wonder if I'm like Pavlov's dog. I think of him, I think of drugs, and the immediate reaction is to go to him. What a, what a massive level of self-awareness from this woman. <clears throat> but then one day, he disappeared. All social media vanished, his number disconnected, and he dropped off the face of the earth. The last thing I heard is that he was going interstate for work, and he didn't come back. I looked him up. For two months before I gave up, I ended up back with my original boyfriend and we've been relatively happy up until now when the dealer I fell in love with tracked me down. He's definitely going to prison and he's being sentenced in April, which I will be there for and I'll be visiting him as well. Man, I'm not cheating on him physically. I'm not cheating on my boyfriend physically, but I have missed this man so much that as soon as he messaged me, it was like an unconscious response to answer him. I have him hidden in my phone uh, and he doesn't, uh, message me when I'm with my boyfriend. All the, well, yeah, you're cheating on him. Like that's what that's what cheating is. Like you're not you're not fucking the guy, but you're cheating on your boyfriend. That's let's can we embrace reality, please? You're 
secretly messaging another man and in love with him and and uh, making him uh, avoid your boyfriend and hiding him from your boyfriend. If you weren't cheating, you wouldn't do any of those things. You would go, oh, I'm just talking to our dealer, seeing how he's how he's going. You're cheating on your boyfriend already. You just haven't like made the ultimate betrayal, which is fucking him while you're with your boyfriend. You're currently cheating on him though. Um, <clears throat> all the feelings I had for him returned as soon as he did. I haven't been truly happy, happy with my boyfriend for a while, just comfortable. I know I'm a massive cunt and this is very inexcusable, but that dealer, he's my one. Fuck. Is he? I hate it more than anyone else, but he's my one. My boyfriend fucking hates him for obvious reasons. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll probably stay with my boyfriend and keep this a secret, especially since he's going to prison. The idea of him in prison breaks my heart so much more than the idea of breaking up with my boyfriend does. But for what he did, he deserves prison. We're both shit people in different ways. Maybe we deserve each other. Anyway, I don't know what you'll get out of this, uh, but here it is. Uh, yeah, have a shit one. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's uh, I don't know what to say. I think that you need uh, therapy. I think that you need to... Man, honestly, in situations like this, I think you need to leave the state. And like move and relocate and completely disconnect from this tangled, fucked situation that you have yourself in. Obviously, you shouldn't be with your boyfriend, <laughs> right? You don't like him. And it, the, the kindest, nicest thing you could do would be to break up with him. Uh, because it sounds like... I mean, you haven't said anything about this guy, but it sounds like he hasn't done anything bad to you. Maybe he has, I don't know, but you didn't write anything, so I'm going to assume that he's been like, not a great boyfriend, but like an okay one. You should break up with him. That should be step one. This guy doesn't deserve that. That's disrespectful. Might be very scary for you to be alone, right? But that's not a good enough reason to waste this guy's time, cheat on him, and really hurt him, which is what you're doing. So that sucks. I would also not really encourage pursuing a heroin dealer for a man. You know? I would I mean I have some questionable friends. I don't want to fuck any of them. That's, you know? My questionable friends, I keep them at arm's length because you don't want to get swooped up in the chaos because things like this happen. Um And that, that yeah, I don't think you, I don't know. I don't know what you want me to say. You're in a terrible situation. My advice would be to leave the state uh, and relocate. That's a really big thing to do and really difficult and probably quite unpractical advice. Maybe at least move suburbs, you know? You need to unplug from this situation. It seems like you're stuck in some weird fucked feedback loop where you don't even know if you like drugs or this guy. Maybe you, like, you, you do like both and without one, you wouldn't like the other. So it sounds like you've got a fucking drug problem. You obviously have mental health issues, which you've said, and you don't really like your boyfriend, but you're with him because it's safe and comfortable, which is very rude to this guy. So I think you need to find a different support network that isn't this guy that you're essentially using and definitely isn't this dude that's going to prison and is also a heroin dealer because that's clearly not healthy. Um, yeah. I don't know how much of this advice you're going to take, <laughs> but I hope you take some of it. And my advice would be to you need to unplug from all of these people. You are who you surround yourself with as, as fucking, you know, generic as that advice sounds. You are your friends. So if you don't unplug from this situation, you will just end up spiraling. And I've seen it so many times before where people just get sucked into this vortex of chaos and drugs and depression and sex and all this kind of stuff and it ruins their life i've seen it uh, i've witnessed it i've tried to stop it it doesn't help the only thing that i've that i've ever seen work is people stuck in that look around them and go oh i'm stuck here because i'm stuck here with these people because they're stuck here because they're with these other people i need to disconnect and unplug and that's what you need to do you need to fucking unplug from all these people and move somewhere else Stop seeing them. It's really, really hard to do, but you need to build new connections. Reach out to your family if you have a good relationship with them. If you don't, maybe you could repair it. If that's not an option, you need to go to, you know, there's fucking women's shelters. There's social outreach programs. There's 
Alcoholics and Addicts Anonymous programs. There's, fuck it, at this point, there's even church and religions. They will, uh, you know, little local churches. Don't do the big crazy ones, but local churches can be really good for this sort of thing of like disconnecting from a really terrible social group and connecting with a more positive one. Even if you're not that religious, even if you don't think you're going to stay there for a while, it can help. There's youth groups and stuff like that that help people out. Um, yeah, you need to unplug and find a more supportive network, basically, is my advice to you. That's really, really difficult to do, but that's what you have to do. Because otherwise, you know, you're going to get sucked down and spiraled. You know, this person that you want to leave your safe, comfortable space for is going to prison. You know, that's the direction you want to walk in because he's hot and he has drugs. I don't know about that. Sounds like that'll ruin your life. Uh, good luck. I'm going to end the podcast there. What? Good. I was just testing. See if you would say anything. You didn't pass the <laughs> test. You can keep the microphone for next episode. Congratulations, mate. All right, guys. We'll see you later. I'm going to continue on with the Patreon podcast. That'll be up now. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Have a shit one. Bye. Come see me live. Loosebeers.com.